I would say it's great to see you, but I can't see you. But I'm imagining you in all of our homes all across the coast and even the world. It's pretty exciting to know that we've got friends and family who have been part of Coast Vineyard uh, who are all over the place and are joining us today. Uh, the plan for today, as you join us, is that we're going to be bouncing in and out of different people's homes. You're starting in our home. Uh, you may see my dog <laughs> make a sneak appearance. Uh, we've got pre-recorded worship from Thomas and Caitlin's home. We were able to uh, get a couple of recordings of messages done this week at the Hub. So we'll have one of those from Matt today. And, uh, and we know that we may not be all in one place, but we are still together and uh, we're just scattered all over the place and that's that's kind of exciting it's a bit like that seed um, from the parable of the sower where they go and they scatter all the seed and i know that we usually think about that parable in terms of the seed of god's good news for us in our lives and does that take root or not but I also wonder if this is an opportunity for us to be the church scattered, that we are scattering seeds of hope and of love and of kindness all over the, our city, all over our country and all over the world, wherever we may find ourselves. So it is so good to have you here with us today. Uh, we know that we're having to keep adapting things as we go. And, uh, and so you're watching our learning curve develop as we go along, but we're so glad that uh, we get to be in this with you. Uh, there's a couple of announcements, just as you're getting settled, grab your cup of drink, you know, get the kids settled, all that kind of thing. Um, if you aren't already connected in with us in, in multiple different places, then we would love for you to do so. A few places that you may want to do that, as well as here on our YouTube channel, uh, you'd also want to take a look at our website, www.coast.org.nz and uh, so you can kind of see what's happening we're keeping that up to date as we go uh, you may also want to receive our, our regular emails our updates so uh, you can do that on the website just jump onto the um, contact us fill out the form and we'll start sending you those emails so you're in the loop with what's happening at Coast uh, our other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, uh, they are places that you might want to join us. Uh, for those of you who have made Coast your home, there's the opportunity to be part of a Facebook group if you aren't already. Just, just jump onto the, um, the Coast Vineyard Church uh, Facebook page and then go to groups and you'll see a few different groups there. There's the community group and that's for anyone where, who Coast is their home. There is one for all our parents, which you may want to be part of because I know that Rachel, our children and family pastor, is going to be uploading a bunch of things there for you to be able to do uh, with your kids over this time. And there's also a group there for the ladies to connect as well. So, uh, so in terms of kids, it's pretty exciting because they now have their own playlist in our YouTube channel. And every Sunday, there'll be things there for them to be able to engage with. And so you're going to want to take a wee look at that. Um, if you haven't seen it already, have a look afterwards and then the kids are going to be able to uh, participate in, in things there. Uh, we're also, we developed some communion resources for you because what we would love to do each week is to share communion together. And that means that we're going to be doing it in lots of different ways. We're not all going to have juice and bread in our homes. We make it work with what we have. It could be tea and toast. Uh, it's it's a, a meal of thanksgiving, a meal that brings us together centered on Jesus. And so we've popped some resources onto our website uh, that you'd be able to access. That's just in the resources section under grow so that you can use those at home. And the other thing that we've developed this week that's going to be rolling out is our midday moments. That's another playlist on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to access it through our website as well. And uh, that's just some little reflective thoughts that are going to pop up through the week from different part members of the staff team and uh, just to kind of keep reorienting our hearts and our minds towards Jesus as, uh, as we keep working through this time uh, that we've got in front of us. I can just hear the dog. Uh, that's Sky, by the way. So, as we do church together this morning, we would love to hear from you. We loved the fact that so many of you commented on the live feed last week. Please do that again. It'd be fun to see who's here and where you are. And the other thing we would love is just for you to start sending us your stories. 
We want to keep celebrating God's activity in our lives, in our families, with our neighbours, as much as we're able to right now in our lockdown kind of mode that we're in. We won't stay that way, but even while we're in this place, we're still going to have God working in us and through us. So we'd love to hear those stories. So send them to us either through the um, website or email them to us at info uh, at coast.org.nz. Okay, that is enough chat from me. Why don't we pray and then we're going to worship with Thomas and Caitlin. So come join me. So Lord, we are grateful for your presence here with us today. Thank you that you're with us wherever we are in all of our homes. I pray now, Lord, that you would come by the power of your Holy Spirit and that you would fill us and fill our homes again. Lord, where we are maybe running on empty because we've given out a lot this week, Lord, I just pray that you would come and fill us again. Help us, Lord, to just settle our hearts, settle our minds and come to this place of worship, of fixing our eyes and our gaze on Jesus and pouring out our love for him because of his love for us. Come, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'll hand it over to the worship team.
Sweetest of love. 
join me in prayer as we finish worship together. Lord God, the only reason that we can sing that it is well with our souls is because you are here. 
You are present with us. Regardless of our circumstances, Lord, you are faithful, you are trustworthy, you are present. And God, I pray that your peace would come to each one of us as we rest in this truth. Father, that just as David wrote in Psalm 16, he said, I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. So, Father, I pray that you would come to each one of us now, that you would fill us again with your Holy Spirit, that we would find rest and security in your constant presence. And God, would you be with us as we continue to gather together this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, if you had a chance before we got going to get the things set up for the kids, then they might want to pop into the room next door and, and do some of that on the computer. Or you might want to save that for later. But we're going to spend some time now. We're going to hear from Matt. He was able to pre-record a message for us at the Hub before we went into lockdown this week and, uh, and just get a message of hope for us in the middle of all that's happening for us right now. Well, hi, Coast Vineyard. Here we are, Sunday number one after the lockdown. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're still friends with everyone in your house. Uh, yes, so I'm actually not live to you this morning. Well, I am live to you, but this was actually recorded on Wednesday night. Uh, just looking at the clock over there. It's 5 past 8 p.m. on the night before lockdown. We've got uh, four hours to go. So. Uh, we're getting a few things going. So, and we've got Nathaniel over here, we've got Jason here, Stanley's here, the four of us, and we're all keeping at least two meters apart, okay? So you'd be, uh, in case you're wondering, in case you're worried for us, but we hope that you're doing well. So, hey, I was gonna talk about a few things now. Hopefully this will be encouraging for you in this strange time. I'm gonna wanna talk this, uh, to you today about moving from fear and worry into peace and hope. So that's what we're going to be doing. And so I just know that these times, uh, our fear can just crank up, can't it? So, uh, so here, like on Monday, just gone, uh, New Zealand moves to alert level three. And so everyone went to pack and save. On Wednesday, they declared a national state of emergency, which gives the authorities extra powers. Lunchtime Wednesday, there were 7,000 coronavirus deaths in Italy. The coronavirus has been declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. Wednesday night, we moved to lockdown, stay at home, and please stay at home. Uh, everything worldwide is shutting down. It's unprecedented, and the media is they're fanning the, the, the fear a little bit. Uh, as well as they go. The media these days is in such this habit of sensationalizing things and it's not helpful for our whole situation. So as your pastor, I know that some of you, maybe many of you, may be feeling fear and anxiety. And uh, I just want you to know that like, I am praying for you. I'm praying for Coast Vineyard Church every day. Uh, I'm praying... I'm going to be praying specifically for groups of people in our church. Uh, starting tomorrow, it's the first day of the lockdown. I'm just going to be going through the church uh, address list and praying. So tomorrow, we've got, starting with Tamara Adams, the Alexanders, and the Allens, and the Anthonys, including their one-month-old Scarlet, and the Aram. So that's tomorrow, um, which was Thursday. So you just need to know that you know, you're, we're with you. In myself and the and the Coast staff team, it's important to know that we are going to to lead us through this calmly with our best leadership. And it feels in many ways that uh, the journey, my journey and many of the staff is, that God has taken us on has so well prepared us for this time to be able to lead you 
as we go. So um, we will get through to the other side. Could I just say, uh, as we get to uh, this point here, just wanted to say hi if there are people that are watching uh, from other places apart from on the Hibiscus Coast. Uh, we saw a number of you tuned in last Sunday and it was so great to have you. And again, hello wherever you are and thanks for being part of our, our community. But as I said, uh, we are all going to, to get through to the other side. Uh, this season will not last. History has shown us that epidemics, they just have a, a, a time frame. They grow. It's like a bell curve. They, they grow, and we've seen, the, we've seen the curves, haven't we? They grow, and then they, they decline. It's, that's the way they go. So there is an other side to this. But today, we're, who knows where we are in that uh, so because of that, I want to strengthen your confidence and replace any fear and anxiety with hope and peace. And there's five things that I'm going to go through. And I got the inspiration for this from Rick Warren from Saddleback Church. He's a good dude. But as we start here, I like to pray and then we'll get into it. If you wanted to write these things down, you can uh, press pause and run and get a, um, something to write them down. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. We invite you to come. Just come into, a, into our hearts just where we're at as we just take this moment just to, just to stop, to breathe, to turn our hearts and our minds towards you. And in that we open ourselves to the goodness of heaven that we know you pour into us as we turn to you and we open ourselves to you. So Holy Spirit, come. Come with your, your presence. Come with your peace. And give us ears to hear what each one of us needs to hear today. Amen. Amen. All right, number one. This is this, remember, this is five things that will help you to move from fear to peace, from anxiety to, to peace. Number one, you need to know and remember that not everything that you hear is true. Okay, these are the things that you hear, that the virus was genetically engineered and deliberately released. It's not true. That the virus can fly through the air and hone in specifically on people who watch Love Island. It's not true, okay, not true. This Proverbs 18 verse 2 says this, Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. Don't we know that? Proverbs 14 15, The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. So important to choose who you listen to in this season. And if you're wanting to know the facts about the virus, is one place, it's a website, www.covid19.govt.nz. The government really do know what they're doing. They've got the best scientists. They've got the best input. They are working hard. They are, uh, that is the place if you want to know what's happening. And, um, and the other thing too that I've found is that there's a lot of people um, that are trying to use this situation to promote themselves. And they try and look like they're helping, but they really are just self-promoting. Just be aware of that, you know, with your different things that come along. So get the facts and base your decisions and what you do on the facts, okay? That's, that's important. Proverbs 13, 16, all who are prudent act with knowledge. They've got the facts, but fools expose their folly. So get the facts, okay? That's number one. Number two. This is important again. All these are important. Remember that this will pass. This will pass. This is not going to be ongoing forever and ever. This will pass. So just do what the government asks. Do what the doctors say to do. This is, this is Peter the Apostle says this in the Bible too. Good words for us for today. 1 Peter 4 verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. It's, now, I know this was written by Peter to Christians who are being harassed and hassled and persecuted because of their faith. But what it does tell us is that our life in God is not without troubles. 
Peter goes on to say, even in hard times, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God rests on you. So commit to God afresh and continue to do good. That's what he's saying. Yes, we've got troubles, but in, even in hard times, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God rests on you. I don't know. I read it today and it just, just lifted my spirit, just lifted my heart. The spirit of glory and God rests on you. So commit to God afresh and continue to do good. And one more scripture from the Apostle Paul that we can draw courage from, knowing that this, this will pass. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17, 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. How about that for a good word for this season? We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Third thing, remember to focus on what is unchanging. Now, there's going to continue to be a lot of changes. Hasn't this been the week of change? Sunday, a week ago, we had a number of people in the hub here and we were doing live streaming. We were so excited that we, even though there was a, a few glitches, we, uh, we got there. And, uh, and if you missed that, that's available on our YouTube channel as well. It might still be in two parts, so make sure you see both parts. So the, probably the second part, they're both good, both good. I was going to say the second part is, is better, but it wasn't because the first part was awesome as well. But, uh, but here we are a week later and, well... We're actually here on Wednesday night, but here we are watching this a week later. And wow, what a what a week, uh, what a couple of weeks. Things are, and there's going to continue to be a lot of changes. But the key to stability is to focus on the things that don't change. That's the key to stability. Here's some that I, I jotted down. Things that don't change. That God sees everything I'm going through. That God cares about what I'm going through. That God will go through everything with me. You know, you, you, you're never alone. You, and I know that we, we talk often about the presence of God. And, and I know that we don't often, there are times when we don't feel the presence of God. But He is with us all the time. We are never alone. And, and could I just say on that whole thing, we've got some time over these four weeks that we don't normally have. And I know that a number of you are still working, but you will have your travel time back that you don't normally have. Uh, and it may just be that um, you've got a little bit more time. And could I invite you to experiment with seeking God's presence? You know, maybe it's just a, a walk down to the corner of the garden and, and, um, and, and just stopping and looking around inviting God into your situation, inviting God into your thoughts and your, this, you know, your emotions, even just looking around and, and just bringing gratitude for creation and, uh, and just inviting him to come with his presence and, uh, and explore different ways to, to, to pursue his presence. And we'll help you with that as, uh, with different things that we've got planned over the next four weeks. Um, but God is, you know, in James 4, in the scriptures, he says, if you draw near to God, he will, God will draw near to you. And it's a funny thing because uh, God is actually always near. I think what, what James is talking about here is that as we, as we change our posture towards God, as we turn towards him and open ourselves up to him, then we discover that he is right there and we can encounter him and his presence and his love and his life, which is just the best. So there's a, there's a couple of things there. So, okay, so again, I was talking about the key to stability is to um, focus on what never changes. Here's a few more things. God has the power to answer prayer. And, but it's always good to kind of lump these things, these things together. God has the power to answer prayer. God is good. 
and he always acts out of his goodness to me and God's plan is always better than my plan. Those things are so helpful. These are things we can count on that bring stability in the midst of all that's going on. Another thing that, that never changes, God will never stop loving me. And the last one I jotted down here is my eternal destiny is secure when I put my trust in Jesus. So there's a bunch of things that we can just stand on and know that that's not going to be shaky while a lot of things around us are shaky. So, so that's, uh, remember to focus on what is unchanging. Fourth thing there that uh, I've got written down here, fourth thing out of five is to just again be thinking and knowing that this is not the end of the story. This is not the end of the story. Have a listen to this. This is Paul the Apostle talking to the church in Corinth about his journey. And for some of you may not be familiar with Paul the Apostle. He did a number of journeys all throughout uh, uh, Asia and through into Europe and all to be bringing the good news of Jesus to people that hadn't heard it. And, but in the midst of that, he got, uh, he got himself in all sorts of challenging situations where people, he was thrown in jail, he was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was uh, on many of these things. And, and this is what he says to the church in, in Corinth about the, the journeys. In 2 Corinthians 4, he says this, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. And he goes on to say in verse 14, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. That's cool. This is not the end of the story. Even if this virus takes my life, I know what is next. I know what is next. It's, I was thinking about it it's, it's kind of like watching the Shawshank Redemption. Or I think Christians are allowed to watch that movie. Maybe not the young ones, okay. But very stressful movie and you kind of get, once you get into it, you're just like, I just hope he escapes. I just hope he escapes. And it's so stressful because you're just not quite sure what's going to happen. And um, oh, this is why I always get in trouble for, spoiler alert, <laughs> spoiler alert, you must have seen The Shawshank Redemption. But then you've watched the movie once and, ah, oh, you know, it all works out okay. Sorry <laughs> if you've never watched it. <laughs> um, but then when you watch it the second time, which is usually on Christmas Eve because they always play it at Christmas time, and um, it's so less stressful because you know that everything's going to be okay. And that's what it's like knowing what's ahead for us uh, that uh, are in God. We know the end of the story. We know the next part of the story. We know that it's all going to be okay. We know we're going to make it. And, and this is a picture in Revelation 21. Uh, again, it's uh, a picture of what's ahead for us in our life in God, uh, the life after this life. And it says this, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Number five, again, moving from fear and anxiety to hope and peace. And and this is a funny one because this is where I'm going to ask you to actually do something. Instead of just like grabbing a hold of something, it's actually giving something. And that's, but this will help you move out of fear into peace. Because that God wants, the number five is that God wants to use me and you to help others. I know we're locked down, but phone calls. Phone calls are the best. I'm going to talk. I'm going to do some little things, maybe on Facebook or maybe on the YouTube channel, just some little things that are helpful. I read this very cool thing about talking person to person. And uh, so stay tuned in. That You'll enjoy that when we get there. But phone calls are the best. 
So, and video calls, phone calls. So, video calls are awesome. Now, video calls are actually the best in this time. Uh, phone calls are better if you haven't done your hair or if you, uh, you're still in your PJs. So, um, it's just how are you, you know, is there anything you need, anything I can pray for you about? Uh, so, so helpful. And so, that's a biggie, just, just talking, you know, to people uh, that you know. And um, and in the midst of this, and we're gonna we're, we're quite possibly gonna move in and out of these alert levels. So for not going anywhere, when we come out of that, it's gonna open up a little bit again. And again, there's so there will be the opportunity to to move around. And my expectation is that in this next four weeks, that some of you are gonna just have some like great ideas and thinking this is how we can be a blessing to our community. This is how we can actually help people and make a difference and and in their lives and in their situations. And I'm so I'm pretty excited. And so if, as those come in, fire them through. Let's get talking. Let's you know gear up for for when we come out of uh, out of lockdown. And um, I just love it. So you know the thing is is that Christians over the centuries we've been talking about this a lot as a staff uh, is that Christians over the centuries have been the ones in times of challenging situations when everyone else is running out, the Christians move in and help. You know, in the Black Plague in the, in the 14th century, uh, people didn't have an understanding about viruses and I think that was more of a bacteria plague that, uh, that came in there. And uh, but what they saw is in the cities there was a lot of people dying because obviously because there's a lot of people in a city they see a lot of people dying they think the cities are the problem so they run out of the cities and as they ran out of the cities um, the Christians came in to help the people that were there and you see read story after story of that risking their lives to love others in Jesus' name it's so cool and um, so. You know, maybe for us, even in the lockdown, maybe it's, uh, there might be some people that um, they can't get out to get their groceries or if they're in that, you know, sort of older bracket, they're talking about 70s plus or even the, we could go 65 plus. I know all of you guys between 65 and 70, you're not old, I know that. Um, but maybe it just might be a good idea. But, and then we, could, we can go get your groceries for you. You know, we could drop them on the front doorstep and knock and then run, and uh, we can do that. Um, or even uh, if with the whole online shopping thing, they may well get overwhelmed, quite probable. But even if they are, if they do gear up, maybe, and, but then you've never done it before, you're not sure what to do, we can help, you know. And those are the sort of things that we can do for each other uh, in this time. And um, looking forward to seeing um, what comes out of that. So... There's five things, very simple, that I believe is going to help us in this season to move from fear and anxiety to peace and hope. Know that not everything that you hear is true, so you get the facts. Know that this will pass. Remember to focus on what is unchanging. Remember that this is not the end of the story. And know that God wants to use me to help others. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty good stuff, though, eh? So, anyway, here's... Here's something just as we're finishing up here. Here is what I'm going to do for you in this, this whole new season, not just lockdown, but in this season that probably is going to be a year of a very different way of doing life. Um, that we are going to make sure that you're not alone. Whatever the scenarios are that you find yourself in or we find ourselves in, whether it's lockdown, alert level three, two, Whatever it is, we are going to make sure that you won't be alone. We're in this together. But please, like, can we, uh, it would be so good to get your contact information. And if we, if we don't have it, so that we can uh, look out for you, look after you, uh, make sure that you're okay. That would be fantastic. We're, we're in this together. Uh, second thing I'm going to do for you is that we are going to help you to keep spiritually healthy over this time. You can figure out your own, your physical health, you can figure that out for yourself. Um, maybe we could 
do some things like that as well. Maybe we could all do like uh, Zoom kind of aerobics or uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> the team are thinking, no, that's a, they're sort of laughing, thinking, I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, uh, but we're going to help you keep spiritually healthy. We're going to, uh, the groups is the key thing. Like we've got a number of uh, groups that are already happening at Coast Vineyard. They are connecting with, you know, which is great. But if you're not connected to a group, email me. Matt at coast.org.nz. Email me and say, like, I'm not connected to a group, and we'll we'll find people that um, that'll probably be good fit for you. They'll, you'll be able to get to know each other, be able to look out for each other, journey with you over this time. It'll be so so good. So we'd love that. Um, I know that I'm going to be praying for you. I know that the, uh, there's, we've got a team of uh, prayers in the church. We'll be praying for you. Uh, the staff will be praying for you. And, uh, and, and like I say, we're going to be providing help for you in your walk with God as well. And we're going to be doing our Sunday services, 10 o'clock. It's going to come you know, on and go like you are in right here if it's Sunday morning for you. And, uh, but as well, there's going to be other input, other uh, inspiration, encouragement, invitation, um, and would love you to take advantage of that. Um, so we're going to be praying for you, praying for you. We're going to make sure that you're not alone. We're going to keep you, help keep you spiritually healthy, and we're going to help you if you get sick. Okay, you're going to go say, well, how are you going to do that? Well, we don't know, but we're going to be talking. We've got medical experts in our church and in our community, and we're going to be and we're going to be working with uh, the advice that's going to come through from the wider medical community. We are going to figure out how we can help you as uh, and do everything that we can if you happen to get sick. Okay, so you know that we we will do that for you. Um, and one last thing that we're going to help you with is that we're going to help you to help others. We're going to provide some things that, you, hey, you might want to talk to your, to your neighbours, your community, your, your groups, your friends, different people, your, your families, uh, and just give you ways to encourage them and help them. And I know that um, as I leave here tonight, which is Wednesday night, I'm going to be uh, before midnight, I'm going to be heading up and down my street just delivering some letters I've got printed out saying, hey, uh, we live... Uh, you know, a few houses away. If you need anything, if you get yourself caught out, um, we're, we'd love to help. But as well, we're, we're, um, we're part of Coast Vineyard Church. And if you'd like to, we'd love to pray, uh, pray for you, uh, pray with you. Just you could fl flick me a text uh, or give me a call. We'd love to do that. So that's, um, so this is really is an opportunity to help people still, even though we're in lockdown and also to help people to find God. And we'd love to, inspire you to uh and help you in ways that you can you can do that in the way that you're connecting with people all right so nearly there what i need you guys to do though again is that if we don't have your contact information we'd love to get that um especially if like there's an emergency situation it'd be so helpful if we've got your mobile number and your, your email address uh stay connected to your small group these are things that we need you to do Give us your contact information. Stay connected to your small group with phone calls, or you know, we we put out a uh, an email today which had a little Zoom tutorial on there. Zoom's a uh, a web-based platform for uh, video calls and communicating, and you can get like heaps of people all on the screen all at once. Uh, it's wonderful. You know, just keep. Um, we just want you to get connected and keep following. Uh, all of our connecting places. We've got Facebook, we've got our YouTube channel, we've got our website, and um, anything else, guys, apart from that, those are the key ones, aren't they? So uh, Facebook, website, YouTube channel, uh, Instagram. Um, the youngest person in the room just yelled at Instagram, so which was very helpful. <laughs> Um, so everyone, that's probably enough from me. Like I know that everyone at church laughs at me because this is what I always do when I finish up. So I thought we'd just throw that in for the amusement of people who uh, are always looking for me to do that as we close. Like God is with us. God is good. I'm going to finish with a uh, scripture out of Jude. And it's just a delightful uh, prayer that uh, we could pray together if you are fast enough. It's Jude 24. Or you can just press pause. Um, all right. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling 
and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. That was so good. I'm going to do it again. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, we're going to take communion together now and uh, we have created a resource for you to be able to use at home uh, so that every Sunday we'd be able to share communion, whether it's with our flatmates or whoever else it is we're living with, our family, our children, our parents, our extended family, whoever that is, that uh, we could take our time and share this together. So if you take a look when we're done, at our resources section on our website you'll see communion at home and there'll be a guide there that talks a little bit it means that you can chat about it before you partake about in it and it's just that opportunity to remind ourselves what is this all about again uh, be able to talk with our kids about that and include them and then it's going to lead you through some different prayers uh, reading some scripture together and then actually taking communion and it may be that you're um, having to modify your approach. I know last week we had people uh, with all sorts of interesting um, versions of what they were using as the elements of communion. But the main thing is, is that we remind ourselves again that this was a meal that Jesus had with his disciples the night before he was betrayed and arrested. And he encouraged them, do this whenever you gather, whenever you meet, to remind yourselves of what's about to happen. And what happened was, is he went to the cross he died and he was resurrected and brought new life to us. Because of that, we have forgiveness of sin. We have healing for our bodies. We have the kingdom of God breaking into our world and into our lives. That his body, which is represented by the bread, is uh, when we break that, it's reminding us that he, his body was broken for us. But, and it's there that we find healing and wholeness for our bodies and when we take whatever we're going to use for the drink whether it's grape juice or just juice uh, or wine or whatever it is um, that's to remind us of his blood that was shed for us that washes away sin that washes away the stain and shame of all that has happened before and every time we take communion we get to re-anchor ourselves in this story his story his invitation to us to enter into that relationship with him that he made possible for us to have with God. So we're going to end. I'm going to pray. And then you can, you can take your time, down, quickly jump onto the website, have a look at that resource, and then take communion together. Pray for God's presence to be in your midst. It's a great opportunity for us to check in with one another. How are we doing today? And to be able to invite God to meet the needs that we have today and for us our hearts to turn towards him just as David said that I keep the Lord always before me and I will not be moved. God bless you. Let's pray together and then we'll finish. So Lord we thank you for what you did on the cross. We thank you for this invitation into forgiveness, into healing, into wholeness, into relationship with you, and into life in its fullest. And we pray now, that God, that you would be present to us, that you would fill this moment, take these ordinary, everyday things that we're using today and fill them with new meaning as we reflect again on your gift of love to us at the cross. We receive again your forgiveness and your invitation into a new way of living. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week.